Recently, there was this white paper that stated that more young Singaporeans between the age of 26 and 35 are buying a new private property. Apparently, this white paper is from ERA, but when I searched around the internet, I couldn't really find it to verify it. But never mind, let's assume it's correct. And there are actually two key findings from this white paper. The first is that this trend could be attributed to a rising income level for young Singaporeans and many of them wanting to get around the age and income limits to get their first property. As we know, HDB flats, if you are single, you can only buy them after the age of 35. The second part is that many young Singaporeans feel that buying private property is a worthwhile investment. So today, I'll be sharing with you some important findings, especially if you are considering to buy one for yourself or if you know someone who has this exact question. Hi guys, welcome back. Without further ado, let's start with the first point, which is, is it really true that rising income levels are helping young buyers buy their first private property? Maybe you have been a fan of this channel and you may have seen me do some reaction videos to this, which is actually of a young graduate looking for a starting salary of $10,000. These kind of things make headlines quite often, correct? But the reality is most fresh graduates make between the 3.5 to 5.5k as a starting salary. Question is, is this very different from 10 years plus ago or not? I've actually done the homework for you to show you that back in 2010, actually graduates were already earning 3,000. So maybe there's a jump of 3 to 4,000, but it isn't that big as what we imagine. Property prices on the other hand, if you see this chart over here, you would realize that it's been climbing substantially, correct? And some may say that this is easily 50%. Does that mean that higher starting salary for fresh graduates are encouraging them to buy private property? Maybe not so much. In addition, do note previously, down payment was only 20% because loan to valuation was 80%. But today, down payment needs to be 25% already, which means someone buying a condo in 2010 may see a price tag of $1 million, but only needs $200,000 in down payment. That same condo in today's age might be $1.5 million and they need 25% down payment, which means $375,000. The question is, can this difference be made up with this slight increment in starting salary or not? Let me know your thoughts in the comment sections below. The other part I'd like to draw attention is that what we are discussing today is this red bar at the bottom which is those that are aged 26 to 35. The percentage was once 9% back in 2015, but currently, it's almost 4 times that at 35%. The total volume of transactions has actually increased, which means also, if this percentage increase and the total volume increase, the amount of people in this category that have purchased a private property have really shot up through the roof. Question again is, is this affordable for each and every one of them? Likely not, correct? Logic suggests that some who are in this category may be overstretching or may be giving in to this fear of missing out FOMO and are buying a private property when they may not be able to comfortably afford it. And as to the point of affordability, let me share with you a special tool from today's sponsor, Property Guru Finance. Before buying a property, it's very important to plan for home loan earlier than later. The pre-qualification tool from Property Guru Finance helps you estimate how much mortgage you are eligible to borrow based on your unique financial situation. Simply click on Get Pre-Qualified and follow with a few simple questions. Up next is a few simple steps to include your basic details and also your income and expenses because after all, this report is built for you. It simplifies all the latest bank rules and MAS regulations. The pre-qualification report provides the estimated loan amount you are eligible for. It can be used to speed up your viewing as it's accepted by the majority of agents in the Property Guru ecosystem. Now the next thing to do is actually use Property Guru Finance's platform to find the best mortgage rates. You can also look for promotions provided by the banks and Property Guru Finance partners with 13 banks in Singapore and gets the best mortgage rates in town. Getting the right package will easily save you hundreds of dollars per month on the mortgage cost. So if you're keen to find out for yourself whether it's new purchase or refinancing, to get started, check them out with my links below. 
Now, back to the point on those who are age of 26 to 35 buying a private property. This chart just shows the breakdown by age, but doesn't really give other demographic data. Firstly, we don't know how many of them are married couples sharing the cost of home together, correct? If someone is buying a condo on an individual basis, that is not too easy to afford. But if it's a couple buying, then maybe yes, the cost is divided by two because many Singaporean households are actually dual income. This monthly amount, as you can see, when divided by two, is not too challenging. The second is that we don't know how many of this whole entire ratio is formed by married couples buying their second property, which happens to be a private property. Some of them got married earlier, bought a BTO at age of 29 and sold it off and are buying a condo now at age of 34 and they'll naturally fall into this category. As I've shared many times on this channel, if you have bought a BTO and cashed out after 5 years, it's very likely you have built up a pot of gold from that sale and upgrading to a condo may not be too difficult. The third part about what we do not know is that from this entire 35% of new private home buyers from the age of 26 to 35, we don't know how many of them needed personal space. You know, this pandemic has really shifted work from office to a work from home arrangement. Some families are very big and do not have the right space and therefore it becomes uncomfortable to work from home. Therefore, some are actually forced by family situation to go and purchase one private property for their own personal reasons. And this is a group whereby they are very stuck because if they are less than age of 35, they cannot buy a HDB flat also. So they had to go into the private property space. And that's why I also feel that this rule of singles only being allowed to buy HDB flats after age of 35 is very dated. The fear has always been, would they provide excessive competition against married couples? Or is it an incentive for, from government to get people to get married? But I think in today's day and age, some singles really need a space of their own. And therefore, I would like to suggest government to reconsider maybe lowering the age group from 35 to maybe 30 years old so that some of them may not be forced to the private market to buy their own property and their own home. Smash a like if you agree on that point of view. Smash a subscribe, especially like content like this that helps you in your financial journey. The second finding from this white paper is that many young Singaporeans feel that buying a private property is a worthwhile investment. Now maybe you may not have seen articles like this that suggest that Property is not a worthwhile investment. Property can be a risky investment, especially when there's a big loan that requires you to have active income for the next 10, 20 years to service that loan. Or you may not have seen articles like this that suggest that property doesn't really provide such a good rate of return if the interest rates are high and if the borrowing amount is low. Property works best when the leverage is big and interest cost is low. And equity investments can actually outperform property returns for many households. But you may have certainly heard of stories from your families and friends when you go visiting and you have always heard of whispers of big profits whenever someone sells a property. Not just that, there are always articles like this that suggest someone who is at the age of 23 buying a condo. These stories create a fear of missing out and my concern is that many who are at the age of 35 and below have not really seen properties crash before in their adulthood. And that's why when we plot the ratio of people buying private properties at a younger age and that of the property trend, you realize that there's a strong correlation. The belief that property is a worthwhile investment is reinforced through many years of seeing good returns on the property front. And since we are to this point, let's reiterate some key findings of whether property is a worthwhile investment. The first is that the loan cost you are paying must be reasonable versus the property growth in value. If the property doesn't appreciate and you're paying a 3% loan cost, for example, you would realize that you're actually losing money from leverage. The second is that the rental yield must look good versus other safe instruments like fixed deposits and CPF OA interest rates. Just now this story of someone age of 23, Miss Chen, she's actually buying this property to rent out to help her earn passive income. If the passive income from property is just 2-3%, Maybe that can already be achieved through fixed deposits, which does not have this headache of getting tenants and seeing increased expenses from property taxes and income taxes. Since you stuck with me right to the very end, let me answer the main question for today, which is, should someone before the age of 35 consider buying a condo or not? Well, the answer depends on whether you understand your other investment options and the cost of mortgage. Is it affordable to you or not? 
Let's fit the answer to different demographics of people. The first is that if you're a young couple buying your first house, for most situations, I wouldn't think buying a private property is the best idea. Because if your first house is a private property, you would be out of this HDB route already. And HDB as a first house has a lot of grants and allows you to keep your mortgage costs really low. More often than not, it's prudent to only upgrade when your pay increases in your career. When kids come about, it's much easier on the budgets because you have kept aside a buffer that you can save up and invest. You know, Prime Minister Lee has actually mentioned that he hopes Singaporeans have children earlier. And very often, I think financial worry holds a couple back from starting a family earlier. Again, buying a first house as a BTO, EC or a resale HDB will allow a couple to keep their costs low at least for the next five years. The second group of people could be couples upgrading from their first house before the age of 35. For this group, it really depends on income. If income is strong, upgrading is actually stress-free. The only thing to measure against is to save up and invest enough to achieve financial freedom. As long as budgets are not overstretched, there should be enough still in CPF to jointly pay for this upgrade. So again, for this group, it depends on income. The third group are singles buying a first property for homestay or investment. If it's for investment, then it really depends on the other investment options out there, correct? If fixed deposits are 3%, maybe a property investment isn't that attractive. But if interest rates drop, then maybe yes, property might become attractive again. On the other hand, if it's for homestay and the amounts are affordable, then sure, buying a private property before the age of 35 can still be a good idea. Now, I'd like to round up this entire discussion with a quick story of a friend who's actually doing very well. He actually bought a condo before the age of 35. And subsequently, he met his girlfriend, who's his wife now, who owns a HDB as a single after the age of 35. They got together and got married. And right now, the situation is they are keeping both these properties. He's still keeping his own condo. She's still keeping her own HDB. And they are renting out one of the properties. The usual question is, hey, if I'm a single owning a HDB flat after age of 35, and if I got married, do I need to dispose that off or not? This story should tell you that there's no ABSD in this situation. And there's no need to dispose of the private property that he bought as a single before that. It is all still within rules. The only time when there's a need to sell off is when both bought HDB flats as singles after age of 35 and got married subsequently. In that case, one of the HDB flats needs to be disposed. Hopefully you have learned something from today and not gotten too confused. Again, leave your thoughts and comments in the sections below. I'll try to answer them. And let me invite you to this previous video I had that was very popular. Would property markets come down in 2024 or not? I would like to invite you to check that out and I'll sign up from here. Take care as always, goodbye.